Okay, this video is about the BMW HTM1. <clears throat> the BMW Burrs and Wilkins HTM1 is a centre speaker that was uh, made to complement the Nautilus 800 series um, from around the year 2000. <clears throat> so <clears throat> it's the largest of the um, centre speakers that they made in the range. They made a smaller single uh, mid bass driver um, two way design. This one is a three way design. <coughs> they also made um, a speaker called uh, the BMW Nautilus 804. Um, it was the next model up from the stand mount speaker, the Nautilus 805. The Nautilus 805 was a stand mount speaker, two -way, a two-way version. Um, then the next speaker up in the range was the Nautilus 804. Um, this speaker has the same drive units as the Nautilus 804. It's a three-way design. It has two base drivers. Uh, I think they're five inch or 125 millimeter. Um, the whole surface area of the um, speaker is actually a dome, a carbon fibre dome. The carbon fibre dome is bonded to the cone um, just around, just next to the roll surround. It's bonded to the cone there and it, also I believe it's bonded to the end of the voice coil to form a rigid structure between... Uh, the dust cap, the cone, and the voice coil. So there's two of those. Now looking at the mid-range driver, the mid-range driver is the same mid-range driver that's used on the Nautilus 802 and the Nautilus 801. Well, and 803 and 804. <laughs> um, it's only used in their three-way designs. Now it's a very clever um, drive unit, it hasn't got a roll surround around the perimeter, it's bonded to the edge of the um, drive unit with, uh, with like a, a, a thin layer of foam. I've got a, another one here, this is one that I broke previously. Now the interesting thing about this drive unit is the lack of obstructions behind the cone and you see that the um, the structure holding the magnet in place is very thin cross braced uh, casting which has like an, uh, an aerofoil in profile now the idea of this is to freely let the rearward energy from the back of the cone um, pass towards the enclosure and uh, not reflect back through the cone um, so it can be um, absorbed by the uh, enclosure the speaker box or the mid-range housing on the 802 and 801 it's held in place there's a bolt that goes into that hole a stud and it's held in place to the back of the cabinet with a, a retaining nut <clears throat> Now, okay, it's a curved design. The tweeter is quite an interesting design as well. The diaphragm, which is made of aluminium on this model, um, behind the diaphragm um, is the magnet assembly. Now, the magnet is like a ring shaped magnet. The idea of that is energy from the back of the tweeter diaphragm, the aluminium bit, uh, the energy from the back of that goes through the hole in the center of the ring magnet and then is um, uh, deadened or silenced down this, down this tapering tube that runs through it. So therefore you only really hear the energy that comes from the front of the diaphragm and it 
improves the clarity of the speaker by removing the out of phase energy that comes off the back of the diaphragm. It's the same with the mid range driver here. Now I've chosen to mount mine on the wall above the television. Um, I've got it suspended on rubber on rubber belts, rubber bands. So it's not rigidly mounted to that bracket, but rather suspended on rubber bands. So there you go. That's the BMW HTM1 center speaker. The smaller of the two center speakers in the range from that period, the 800 series Nautilus uh, range, was the HTM2. Now, HTM stands for Home Theatre Monitor. Now, this is a two-way design. It's got a mid-bass driver there. And the same tweeter as the um, as its uh, bigger brother, the HTM1. It's curved cabinet design again. And it's finished in cherry wood veneer, this one. The uh, yellow cone there is made from Kevlar, which is made by DuPont. Um, BMW no longer use Kevlar, but rather they use their own material that they've developed, which goes black and stained with mould, particularly in humid countries like India. So that wasn't exactly a roaring success. Which is why I believe these speakers, the older range, which are reliable, they haven't got the diamond tweeter. The diamond tweeter is prone to breaking. The aluminium diaphragm is reliable. Um, it's reasonably cheap. Um, as long as you don't touch it, it they're very, it's very thin, the aluminium dome. If you touch it, you're going to put a dent in it. Okay, so it's best to leave those covers on. Don't let anyone touch them. The Kevlar's reliable, doesn't um, go mouldy, but it does change colour. So when it's brand new, it's quite um, a lemon yellow colour. And as it goes older, it becomes a more dark kind of custard yellow colour. This, dive, this um, driver here actually I think has been replaced because one of my um, amplifiers was playing up. And um, well... I think it made some sort of pop when I wasn't around and it burnt out the, the driver so I had to replace it so I've got a new amplifier these dimples on the um, base reflex port um, they do have a, a they well BMW claim that um, that they aid the flow of air in and out the port and reduce chuffing noises um i would say it's more aesthetic design there's no way these ones around here are going to be having any effect on chuffing noises and to be having that amount of air blasting in and out the port would basically mean that you likely to blow your speaker up because um it's going to be at the verge of um melting the voice coil if you're moving that amount of air in and out that violently that that would have any effect i would say it's for aesthetic reasons rather than um any kind of like uh functional thing they claim it's like a golf ball and the way um the little dimples on a golf ball um assist the golf ball in flying uh by causing turbulence in each of the little pockets a bit like ball bearings of air like i say i think it's more of a visual thing i think it looks really good now, these speakers are quite old, and uh, I think they've actually aged really well. Uh, I never put the grill on mine because it tends to sh um, stain the wood, where the wood um, changes colour from the way the light falls on it. So I prefer them without the grills on. <clears throat> and then that way... And they've aged really well, a lovely colour. I, they don't have any natural light falling on them. So that helps.
Now, my main speakers are the um, BMW Nautilus 802s. Um, they're not the largest um, speaker in the range. I think the, well, I don't know whether you could argue the 800 or the 801 is the largest speaker in the range. The 800s look very similar to this, but um, have slightly bigger base drivers and a bigger cabinet, but the same mid-range enclosure and the same tweeter. Okay, so these were probably made from about the year 2000, um, possibly late 90s. But I think this one's probably about 2002. Um, <clears throat> to give you a little tour of it, they're actually quite deep. They look, they're deeper than they actually look, I think. This, this enclosure here is made of something they call Marlan, which uh, is like a mineral loaded resin. I think similar to Corian um, or a bowling ball, that sort of material. It's quite dense and heavy. That's probably some of the greatest mass to the whole speaker. Now, earlier on, I showed you um, the mid-range driver and the way it's designed to let the energy... Um, pass into the enclosure to be silenced and that's the purpose of this um sort of vase shaped um device is for the rearward energy to go down there and get absorbed down to the back of this tube now on the back of it is this nicely made um aluminium piece um this thing here this screw here um this holds in the driver by means of a bolt that attaches to the back of the magnet it's just a threaded bar with this sort of nut device on the back you tighten that up and it holds the driver in place and the drivers are sort of mounted in um, like a jelly gasket and the gasket is made of this silicone material which is ultra squidgy it feels like um feels like jelly um you if you look very carefully, you can just see it oozing out on the perimeter there. That's that jelly gasket. Okay, the um, the bullets in the centre of the uh, driver, these are upgraded ones. I got them from BMW. Um, the original bullets are made of plastic. These ones are anodised aluminium. BMW very kindly sent them to me free of charge. Um, I've got three of them. So I've got one in the centre speaker, which I showed you previously. <clears throat> the tweeter <clears throat> has a nicer finish than the centre speaker's tweeters. They're um, made of aluminium, whereas the uh, centre speaker's tweeters are made of plastic, the um, outer casing. These ones are also longer, and this part of the back is made of aluminium whereas on the center speakers again it's made of plastic now another difference is the cabinet on this one the cabinet's made of um, lamin laminates of beach okay on the center speaker the cabinet's made of laminates of mdf there's something else that um not a lot of people probably know about these speakers is that if you buy a black ash pair a black pair which are black ash veneered they're not made of the beach but they're made of um, layers of mdf so i think the price was the same for the black ash pair and the cherry pair so <clears throat> i don't know i think they were cheaping out really by giving you an mdf um cabinet on the black ash pair but real beach veneer and real beach laminates rather on this cherry pe pair okay they, they're um spray lacquered so you don't need to be rubbing any oil or wax on them you'll just um you'll just damage the finish and spoil it so the best thing to do is just wipe it with damp cloth with maybe a little bit of detergent on it or something like that so looking at the base drivers the base drivers are eight inch base drivers um the paper part of the cone which is there is a Kevlar impregnated paper pulp cone 
It has a carbon fibre dust cap. The carbon fibre dust cap is bonded onto the cone and also onto the end of the voice coil, making a very rigid structure. So there's two of those. On the BMW 800 Nautilus speakers, which are the largest speaker in the range with two bass drivers, the two bass drivers are 10 inch. That's 250 mil. These are eight inch, which is 200 mil. Personally, I prefer the proportions of these speakers, the visual look of these speakers. Um, I prefer them to the 801 and I prefer the look of them as well to the um, 800. The 800 has got a rather ugly base. And this section down here is made of aluminium. And underneath it, it houses the crossover. So the um, aluminium base acts as a heat sink for the crossover. On the 800s, it's a big square, ugly looking plinth. So... <clears throat> Also, I prefer the way this terminates here to the aluminium. If you look on later models, the diamond range, um, they finished the cabinet there and then they had these aluminium bits that kind of had upstands here to, uh, to do the job. Obviously, they thought it was a simpler way to make the speakers. Um, underneath here <coughs> is the base reflex port, which is dimpled in the same manner as the... Um, center speakers that I showed you earlier. Okay, that's about it. Now, I've owned these for a long time and they're pretty much in immaculate condition. Well looked after. I only clean them with a damp cloth. Never rub any horrible waxes or anything on them. Now also, <clears throat> I own the subwoofers in the range. Now these are the subwoofers. They have the base drivers out of the um, Nautilus 801. It's a 15 inch base driver. Now 15, that would be, uh, well 12 is 300, plus another 75. So you're looking at 375 mil base driver. Okay, now I've got these are active subwoofers, got an amplifier in the back. They produce plenty of power and um, I don't really need to, I've got two. Okay, I've got two. Um, but I do plan on changing the location. I'm actually thinking of putting them either side of the sofa and then experimenting with the phase of one. So one's pulling and one's pushing. Or maybe have them both pushing and see what happens. Probably make me feel sick. So um, anyway, we'll do an experiment on that <clears throat> at some point. So they're called the um, ASW 4000. That's Active sub Subwoofer 4000. Now BMW um, sort of stopped making these because they were so so heavy. And they made a smaller version. Um with a curved cabinet that was more manageable to carry. So, um, <clears throat> personally, I actually think this is their, the best range of speakers they ever built. Um, the newer ones might be technically better, but they're also easier for them to make and a lot more expensive. So these represent excellent value for money, this range of speakers. So plans to upgrade. I'm um, thinking of, I've ordered another one of these speakers. I've seen one come up and um, I've, I've bought it and that's on the way. So when I've got two of those, I'm planning to move, I'm planning to move them, put them up here as sides. And then these ones I'm going to put towards the back. Okay, these are my rears at the moment. These are also made by BMW. They're called um, oh, calm down. They're called HTMs. Uh, so this was the previous generation of speakers that BMW made. 
they're called um, the Matrix uh, range. These are eight Matrix HTMs. It was a center speaker that they made. It was based on the uh, Matrix 805. Uh, I know you can't see it very well, being black, and the light's not very good on it. But again, I think these are lovely speakers. I haven't got the same aesthetic appeal as um, the Nautilus range. But yeah, I plan to uh, put those ones up here. Um, so I'll have to get a third centre speaker because I still need, obviously, a centre speaker over there. But that's just upgrade plans. All right. Right, I've just removed the um, cover so you can see it more clearly. Now, <clears throat> the aluminium diaphragm uh, has got that foam layer of, um, surrounding it, which it, it's adhered to. Um, and then behind that is the voice coil. Now, on the original tweeters, that foam layer was only as big as the bit you can actually see right now. And it had sort of like um, double-sided adhesive on the back of it. And it was stuck to uh, the magnet with that self-adhesive um, tape. Now, on my original pair, the um, self-adhesive tape started to come undone, which let the, uh, the um, voice coil assembly and the dome, it's all one assembly, it meant it started coming out of the gap, out of the uh, magnetic gap. Uh, and because of that, it obviously wasn't dissipating its magnetic energy into the magnet. Uh, and also, it wasn't being cooled by the ferrofluid liquid. So um, when it burnt out, and I removed it, you could see that it overheated in the shape of where it was coming out the gap. And when I ordered brand new ones, new, new tweeters, new tweeter diaphragms, when they came, I noticed that that foam surround was wider, yeah, than the original one. So when it was put in place and stuck onto the magnet, um, and then that black outer cover this bit was put on it this bit kind of holds the foam surround down onto the magnet so it wasn't just relying on the self-adhesive tape it was also being held down by that outer cover so bmw must have known that that was a problem and modified the part so that the um so that it didn't fail again in the future and when i pointed that out to them they just gave me a refund so don't know whether any I've never ever heard of anybody else mentioning that on any forums or or any other videos whether anybody's ever come across that but um that's that's what I came across I hope you enjoyed the tour of my um BMW Buzz and Wilkins Nautilus 800 series speakers um Subscribe to my channel and um, I'll take you on a tour of uh, my other equipment, my Meridian equipment. And I'll also show you the collection that I have of BMW Matrix speakers. I've also got another stereo which has got Matrix speakers on it. Um, I've always been a fan of BMW speakers. So I used to work there when I was a teenager. And um, I first discovered their brilliance. Um when a mate of mine bought some i think they were 804s they might have been 803s i think they were 803 matrix and i just thought wow they sound so different to any other speaker i've heard they just sound amazing um so i subsequently went out and bought myself a pair of uh um they were called 801s they were the first 801s they didn't have a bass reflex port um and they sounded brilliant um, I bought some quad amplifiers. I think I had two quad 707 amplifiers. And they just sounded fantastic. I really loved those speakers. They had lovely warm sound. You turn them up loud. They were just um, really revealing, transparent in their sound. Really good speakers. And then I upgraded to um, Matrix 801s. And I bought some Meridian Power Amps. Um, and 
They sounded more detailed and they had more they were more dynamic the Matrix 801s but they didn't have such a beautiful presentation of the sound that the original 800s had I don't think um you know they were more analytical they were clearly more suited to a high resolution source maybe um but they just didn't have the soul i don't think that the original speakers had so yeah i've always been a fan of bmw speakers um i've also had signature 805s nautilus signature 805s shouldn't have sold those really but mind you i'd, I'd have so many speakers wouldn't i if i kept them all um so yeah on my next video i think i might do a tour of my uh, meridian equipment that's my um, surround sound processor and cd player and all the other components that i've got that are made by a british company called meridian boothroyd stuart meridian anyway thank you for watching my video and um, i'll see you on the next video